What would you do if one day you were lost in the woods where in the middle of nowhere you find an old cabin and lo and behold you also find the Book of the Dead? Well, that's exactly what happened to me during my latest adventure. And the ordeal immediately got me thinking about the Evil Dead. Released in 1983, although technically its premiere was in 1981, Sam Raimi gave us his truly shocking and grotesque horror masterpiece, which sees a group of teenagers venture to a cabin in the middle of the woods. Because... I guess that's just what kids did before TikTok was invented. Where lo and behold, a tape recording revealing the words to unleash demonic entities has now made the teenagers prey to the deadites, who are really mean. Like seriously, why are they so mean? Who pissed in their sandwiches? It's up to Ash Williams, played by the legendary Bruce Campbell, to somehow avoid these forces of evil and to make it out alive. So, while I'm stuck in the woods, let's explore 10 things that you didn't know about the original Evil Dead. And if you already knew them, congratulations! You can officially join the Minty Cool Club. So let's check it out. Number 10. Before Evil Dead, there was Within the Woods. The story of the Evil Dead is pretty much the story of Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell's bromance. The two grew up together as childhood friends in Michigan, and as their friendship blossomed, so did their love of making movies. They mainly focused on making comedies, but after making several comedy shorts, they turned their attention to horror and suspense. Where after getting inspiration from horror movie screenings at a local drive-in, Raimi directed what he refers to as a prototype movie, called Within the Woods. Made in 1978 on a budget of $1,600, with the movie only being 32 minutes long in duration, Within the Woods is the basic bare-bones story of the Evil Dead, only minus several tweaks and changes. Now, there are demons who attack young people who are vacationing in a cabin in the woods, but no Book of the Dead. Instead, there's an ancient Native American dagger, with it being explained that the cabin is located on an ancient burial ground. Seriously, back in the 80s, in ghost movies, ancient burial grounds always got the blame. Of course, Bruce Campbell stars, but he's not Ash yet, but simply known as, well, Bruce. And he is actually the villain of the movie. Despite its micro-budget and differences of what was to come, many fans do consider Within the Woods to be the first Evil Dead movie. Number 9. Getting funding from here, there and everywhere. Within the Woods was intended to be a smaller version of a bigger movie that Raimi wanted to make. He wanted to use Within the Woods to pique investors' interests, so he can then get funds and then make that bigger movie. And Raimi was ambitious. He managed to get a theatre to screen Within the Woods alongside showings of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which was helping to spread awareness of his horror movie short. Raimi seeked out the financial assistance of a lawyer, and upon viewing Within the Woods, the lawyer really didn't like the movie, and thus didn't want to invest. But the meeting wasn't a complete loss, as he informed Raimi of how to go about things. So Raimi and Campbell pretty much went and asked everyone that they could to help invest in their bigger theatrical version of Within the Woods, including friends and family members. Well, pretty much everyone. And according to Wikipedia, on some occasions, even begging took place. But regardless, Raimi and Campbell managed to generate $375,000. So it was time to now make their demonic Cabot in the Woods horror feast. Number 8. A Young Filmmaker Trying to Make It Work the crew of the movie would pretty much consist of personal friends and relatives of Raimi and Campbell. Raimi had just turned 20 at the time, so it goes without saying that he was literally at the start of his career. Robert Tappert came on board as producer, as he and Raimi had already worked on several short films together. 
Tom Sullivan came on board to provide the special effects, as he had done for Within the Woods. And his special effects in The Evil Dead are truly amazing, especially when taken into account the movie's shoestring budget and lack of resources. I mean, once again, this is a day long before all that CGI nonsense. Several of the actors seen in the movie had responded to advertisements seeking local actors that Raimi had posted in the Detroit News. Now, there were several changes that happened to the structure of the Evil Dead in those early days of production. For example, the movie was originally called Book of the Dead, which was a reference to H.P. Lovecraft, of which Raimi was a fan of. And the movie was to more follow the plot points of Within the Woods, until it kind of became its own thing, and the Evil Dead was born. But its final title wouldn't come up till much later. But more on that in due course. Number 7. A real cabin in the middle of nowhere was used. What's interesting about Sam Raimi and his youthful enthusiasm for filmmaking is that he didn't actually study filmmaking. His talent purely came from his love of it. Now, he did study, but it was a course in English at the Michigan State University, which he actually dropped out of to make Evil Dead. So as the production went on, the crew had been put together, and now they had to find a filming location. The original idea was for Raimi to film in his home state of Michigan, but the state wasn't too thrilled with Raimi making a movie there, so instead he opted to film in Morristown, Tennessee, who were actually more happy about this ragtag of a production filming a horror movie at their location. The cabin that was used for the movie was an actual cabin that the crew had found in the middle of nowhere while scouting for locations. The cabin supposedly has its own real-life spooky story attached to it. Once again, supposedly, a little girl once lived there, with her mother and grandmother. And one night she woke up during a lightning storm to find that both her mother and grandmother had died. The little girl was taken in by a nearby family, and no one lived in the cabin since then. During the pre-production phase, up to 13 members of the crew had to stay in the cabin, with many of the crew members having to sleep in the same rooms, which led to some conflict and arguments. What also didn't help is the cabin had no plumbing. In other words, no shower and no crapper. Number six, shooting was really rough. So considering that most of the crew of the Evil Dead were inexperienced with filmmaking and or had never made a feature film before, this led to lots of trial and error with many mishaps. On the first day of filming alone, the crew actually got lost in the woods. Frequently, cast and crew would be getting hurt and injured, of which on some occasions even stabbed by objects that were thrown into them or that they ran into. And getting medical assistance was difficult due to the remote location. Bruce Campbell would go on to add that when the crew moved to Tennessee, marijuana was thrown into the mix. And on one occasion, when he used the substance, he had something of a freakout episode. Live ammunition was also used for all the scenes involving a shotgun. And the contact lenses that actress Betsy Baker had to wear when she was playing a possessed Linda were made out of glass, which made applying the lenses to her eyes to be a very painful experience, in which applying them could take up to about 10 minutes. And when the lenses were applied, they can only stay in for 15 minutes, as not to suffocate her eyes which I didn't know was a thing till now. And Baker's misery didn't end there, as on one occasion when having her demonic makeup removed, it ripped out her eyelashes. Ugh, ouch. With the movie being filmed on 16mm film with a camera that was rented, the behind the scenes of The Evil Dead was truly a guerrilla style of filmmaking. Number five, filming took its toll on Sam Raimi's health. Needless to say, the cast did suffer with injuries while making The Evil Dead, with Bruce Campbell going on to describe the shoot as, quote, 12 weeks of mirthless exercise in agony, as well as, quote, a comedy of errors. Not only that, but there were also financial woes too, with the filming having to frequently stop due to the production running out of money, with bank loans being a constant, as well as filming in the cabin also taking its toll, which, as mentioned, had no plumbing, meaning the cast and crew could go days without showering, and temperatures could get freezing. So much so, according to IMDB, cameras and other tech would often freeze and have to be thawed out. 
and the furniture in the cabin would be used as firewood so all those who were staying there and filming in there could stay warm. Needless to say, it was a stressful, hectic shoot, which may have taken its toll on Sam Raimi, as one time while filming, he fainted. Now, it's said at that stage he was working 24-7 by filming all day and writing all night, which seemingly became too much, where one time while filming, he simply passed out from it all. The crew brought him back by throwing a bucket of ice water over him. But it wasn't all bad. Lucky for Raimi, he did have his brother to help him, as Ted Raimi stood in for several characters whenever the actors weren't available. So, there's that. Number 4. Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi Stayed Behind so once filming had wrapped up, pretty much most of the cast and crew left, and all things considered were probably really glad to leave the Evil Dead set and return home. Well, that's nearly everyone, as Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi stayed behind so they could go over the footage of the movie that they shot. It was decided that a few more shots were needed, where Raimi and Campbell returned to the location to film more scenes. One of these scenes being filmed involved the character of Ash being covered in, quote, monster guts. Speaking of which, Ash's iconic blue shirt had so much fake blood on it, at one stage when he tried to put it on, it just fell apart, after it turned solid from him trying to dry it by a fire. That must have been a lot of fake blood. When the cast and crew left the cabin in Tennessee, it is said that they placed a time capsule in the cabin's fireplace. Sadly, not too long after the release of The Evil Dead, teenagers who decided to illegally camp at the cabin accidentally burnt it down. So, it was no more. However, the only piece of the cabin that survived was the chimney and fireplace. So, who knows, maybe the time capsule is still there. Number 3. The Editor Would Become a Famous Filmmaker So with filming done, it was now time to edit the movie together, and a very young Joel Cohen would help with the editing process, who, along with his brother Ethan, would go on to write, produce, and direct several classic movies, including Raising Arizona, Fargo, and The Big Lebowski. Well, I guess we all have to start somewhere, and thanks to a lot of its stop-motion effects and piles of film to shift through, The Evil Dead wasn't the easiest movie to edit. Also, in The Evil Dead, in the background, you can see a torn-up poster for the Wes Craven horror movie, The Hills Have Eyes. This was added because in The Hills Have Eyes, there's a scene with a torn-up poster of a shark. Raimi interpreted this as Wes Craven's way of saying that the movie Jaws was now old news, and that The Hills Have Eyes was the scarier movie of the two. So by having a torn up poster of The Hills Have Eyes and The Evil Dead, was Raimi's way of likewise saying The Evil Dead is scarier than The Hills Have Eyes. Incidentally, Wes Craven would respond to this playful behind the scenes banter by featuring The Evil Dead to be played on a TV in A Nightmare on Elm Street. And then in 1987, Freddy's glove itself made a cameo in Evil Dead 2. Wow, and all of this from a torn up poster of a shark. Number 2. Stephen King got the movie a distributor. So with the Evil Dead footage being blown up to a 35mm print meeting the industry standards, Raimi now needed a distributor in order to get the movie out there. He contacted Irvin Shapiro, whom had distributed Night of the Living Dead, and after a screening, although he wasn't in love with the Evil Dead, he felt that it still had commercial potential. He agreed to help, but insisted the title needed to be changed, as he thought the original title of Book of the Dead may sound boring to the intended teenager and young adult market. So after several potential titles, it was settled for The Evil Dead, which Raimi described as being the least worst potential title. Raimi held the movie's premiere at Detroit's Redford Theatre in October 1981, and even ambulances were parked outside on standby for audience members who just couldn't handle The Evil Dead. This was, however, a gimmick inspired by William Castle, who would often use gimmicks during theatrical showings of his movies. The premiere went down pretty good, but Evil Dead really took off when Shapiro took the Evil Dead to the Cannes Film Festival, which, by the way, he co-founded, where horror author Stephen King saw the Evil Dead there and loved it, 
and referred to it in his review of the movie as, quote, the most ferociously original film of the year. And he even added it to number five of his list of favorite horror movies. So with the Evil Dead now getting praise from the master of horror himself, that only increased the interest of the Evil Dead, with King's endorsements being used on Evil Dead's posters and trailers. Where New Line Cinema picked up the Evil Dead and distributed it on a statewide scale. Yep, it was distributed by the house that Freddy built, long before Freddy. Number 1. Celebrated and Banned After its initial premiere at the Redford Theatre in 1981, The Evil Dead had a more mainstream release in April 1983. And despite not doing so great domestically, the movie was still insanely successful, making over $29 million worldwide on its measly budget of $375,000. The Evil Dead got pretty good reviews from critics, who found its shocking, no bars hold content to be groundbreaking, although it wasn't without its criticisms and controversies. Due to just how violent and gruesome it was, The Evil Dead was originally hit with an X rating, which did eventually get reduced to an NC-17 rating. In the UK, the movie was insanely popular in the VHS rental market, with Evil Dead even beating The Shining. But this victory was overshadowed thanks to the video nasty censorship movement, where The Evil Dead was added to a list of banned movies, deemed unsuitable for the public. Keep in mind, the video nasty censorship movement was spearheaded by someone who even thought the classic series of Doctor Who was too violent and unsuitable. Yeah. Doctor Who. So what chance did the Evil Dead have? Over the years, the Evil Dead would be released in the UK with drastic cuts, until finally in the year 2000 it was released completely uncut with an 18 rating. To bypass censorship in Germany, the Evil Dead was released theatrically and on home media on the same day. But yeah, it still got banned. And the ban wouldn't be lifted till 2016. Wow, in Germany, the authorities really didn't like the Evil Dead. In fact, according to some sources, the Evil Dead got banned in several countries, and in some parts of the world, the movie is still banned. But despite that, the Evil Dead is still hugely successful with a massive fan base, because, as time has proven, the more you try and ban and censor something, the more attention and intrigue it builds up. The Evil Dead is a much-loved horror movie, which is considered a classic. It is definitely shocking and doesn't hold back and really pulls a punch with just how grotesque it can be. And now, 40 years later, it is still truly shocking. Now, I'll be honest, I do think the Evil Dead formula was perfected with the sequel, Evil Dead 2. But like within the woods, it's interesting to go back and to see the first Evil Dead, to see the franchise start, where it would progress from there. Something that really interests me about the first Evil Dead is the character Ash Williams. In that very first movie, he's not the cocky, cool, smart mouth hero that he would later go on to become, but rather a hapless victim who has to toughen up and fight back by proxy. Now, I'm, I know I'm not the only one to say this, but he's kind of this movie's screen queen, as he's in the last survivor who has to go against the killer role, of which back in those days were mainly parts given to female leads. But regardless, it's definitely time to check out The Evil Dead again. Even after all this time, it still has some serious balls. And to this day, has many people fearful of seeing a cabin in the woods, as they just might suffer the grotesque attack of the Deadites. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm going to try and find a way out of here. See ya!